Hello guys, let's talk about filmmaking. So today I'm with David. So David, how much equipment do you think you need? Mostly depends on the kind of work that you're planning to shoot. Um, wedding videography, uh, documentaries, product films, feature length films, all of them have different requirements. And so the equipment that you probably use to shoot a feature length film may be a little too much for a smaller shoot and it may actually make it less uh, productive. Yeah, on set. So last time, there was one person who sent me a private message and was asking me advice on what equipment you really need. And the next question I asked him was, what are you actually focusing on? And this guy is talking about church, like church programs, church events and stuff like that. And he wants me to like draw a list, like a package where, you know, give him a budget. And so he can go purchase this thing and have it in the church, shoot what events they have. And the question I was asking him was, are you also going to use that, the same camera aside the event, the church event, are you going to use it for something else? And he said no. So if you were in my shoes, what cameras would you have? So first of all, um, you have to assess the kind of footage that you're trying to get from that kind of environment. You're looking for continuous equipment because it's, it's an event. Mostly. So church service, concerts and stuff like that. Um, you need basically a camera that can record for long periods of long time. Period, more than 30 uh, minutes. More than 30 minutes you know. above. So you have to watch out for cameras that have recording limits um, and have contingencies for that. Yeah. Um, if you are going to shoot for that long on batteries, you also have to think about kind of cameras whose batteries are affordable. Yes. Because you have to buy a lot of them. Even consider the fact that you can even plug some of the cameras and just do a screen, continuous recording. Yes, for long exactly. Period. So if there's a camera that has continuous power and has, uh, let's say, a D-tab or external power that you can plug in there, that I think that's good. Um, also, you want to think about um, the lighting of the room. Uh, some uh, venues require a lot more light um, and I don't, uh, yeah. don't have daylight. If you have a lot of daylight coming in, yeah. then you Pretty much any camera will produce. You wouldn't worry too control. much about the lighting from the Exactly. Yeah. But if you have a darker venue, you might look into cameras that work best in low light. Low light. Um, and that is also a factor. Or know. else you can also as well get some LEDs and get a good lighting for that, which will cost you probably more. Exactly. Yeah. So basically, you need a camera that um, is good with low light camera that can record continuously in terms of battery and storage. Um, there are certain cameras that will allow you to even connect an external uh, external hard drive. Yeah. Um, and you know, the types of media that you use, some cards uh, like CFast are expensive. So you want to buy a camera that uses maybe SD cards or external SSDs yeah. uh, as a more affordable option. So that's in terms of camera. Also, the, the display. You know, sometimes in uh, in the churches we have another monitor outside for people to watch. So you are looking at um, cameras that can easily um, be connected to uh, monitors outside. So we're looking at uh, uh, cameras that SDI outputs, you know, HDMI outputs. Exactly. It has to be depending on the situation. Mostly in churches, you want more than one camera. Um, and so in case you want to expand that in the future, you want a camera that can output clean, a clean signal out without, you know, display data and stuff like that. So that you can send it to a vision mixer or you can send it, as you said, to a monitor outside yeah. the room for other other rooms in the venue to be able to see the camera. So I, I think the Sony NX100 should, should, should be able to... That's actually an excellent camera. Um, because it's an all-in-one package. This camera has a built-in lens. It has uh, solid audio built onto the body, and that is very valuable. People underrate that, but it's very, very important if you can have a lot more in one package, so that you are not leaving behind anything when you're setting up. You don't need extra gear, extra cables, and whatnot. Those are all points that can 
give you problems down the line. You want to eliminate those. Another thing that it has also is built-in ND filters. Yeah. Um, and it also has um, autofocus. Yes. People really, really, you don't know what autofocus is until you are at an event where you really mm -hmm. don't have the yeah, time you know? to pull focus. Yeah. And if you have a reliable camera that can, that can you pull you, yeah. It's, it's, it's very and valuable. I think it's quite affordable. I mean, for uh, a camera of that, that gives you all those, um, you know, uh, qualities and all those, I mean, it's the same price as a mid-range DSLR. Yes. And a DSLR is pretty much just a body. Yes, and you have to <laughs> buy <laughs> accessories and exactly. stuff like that. Exactly, you have to rig it out in order yeah. to get it the half. You don't even get the sound, you know, attached to yes, exactly. you know, DSLR. And this is where you give you, they give you all, everything. You can, you know, set manually, you can manually set the sound. You can pretty much do everything. Connect your um, audio direct to the camera. You know, and get full flexibility. So I think, yeah. And uh, Sony, which which other cameras? You well, the Sony set of cameras. The I mean, there are a lot of um, what do you call them? camcorders. Yeah. Um, the pro camcorders that we just do the work. They are workhorses. They won't give you the sharpest lenses or the fastest lenses, but they will give you a lot more functionality that will actually help you out of the shoot. And Sony is a solid one. Um, Canon also has the XF series and the XA series. They also have the same sort of functionality. But which is quite expensive. Okay. Which is slightly more expensive than yes, the Sony variant. But what would you say about the French filmmaker who, uh, who, you know, we are not looking at a professional documentary filmmaker, somebody who is just documenting um, probably um, some problem in the society and want to. You know, put some few videos together, you know, to just transfer the information out there. What camera do you think would be appropriate? For the beautiful movie, because I think the Sony NX series should be able to, 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 to do, and uh, based on what you can actually uh, afford, right? So I think that the price the price range vary from um, thousand, somewhere thousand, all the way to $3,000 um, around it. So depending on what's can actually afford them probably your output because then we have um, um, cameras that can deliver uh, give you 4k output and have some that can only give you full hd if you are just a one-man um, operating uh, crew yeah. it's it's a different set of requirements and if you have a bigger crew that can you know handle uh, change of lenses and yeah, whatnot. You sound can afford, and exactly, and you can stuff. afford a lot more of these things. But if you are a one-man team, you need a camera that is light, that has few moving parts, um, that can run for a long time, that has uh, professional connections, SDI, uh, HDMI, um, XLR yeah. for audio. Because now we're going into streaming and whatnot. So you want to be able to be uh, to to provide All whatever this. outputs your client may need. Yeah. You no, know, I ever spoke about drone on, 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 on this platform. And uh, another question that often comes is, do I really need a drone? You know, but people don't get the fact that drone is usually for some particular, um, I should say, effect. You know, we use drone is usually for, um, um, I should say. So drone is usually for um, area photography, you know. So you don't use drone anyhow. So you need that. And mind you, if you you, you do you, you shoot a lot, but you don't often get uh, a, a need to shoot, you know, and bird eye view of a location of a building, you know. You don't necessarily need to buy. A, a well, drone. I mean. Technically, yes, the drones are made for aerial photography, but I mean, we are creative people. So if you feel the need to, you know, track a, a bride and groom running down a, a hill or something with, with a drone, <laughs> or even down the aisle with a drone, that's, it's up to you. It's about safety. It's about practicality. Um, if you can do that with a gimbal, a uh, swan from a boo, why would you need a drone? You understand? It's more about 
finding creative ways of getting certain creative angles. I think you, you really have artists. to think about it because yeah. at the end of the day, you're spending um, uh, it's, it's money, so it's money. you really need to use it effectively. Instead of spending it probably that the, the, the thousand or the thousand five that you are spending on a drone, you probably you probably need like a sound, a sound gear. And instead of using it for the drone, you could and even it, one one drawback of of as you mentioned sound, one drawback of drones is they are loud. Yeah. Um, and so if you want a controlled audio environment, a drone you can't is afford, the worst. Yes, you can afford to be flying drone all over exactly. the place. Your advice for anybody who wants to. Uh, Buy equipment for filmmaking, uh, for his company, documentaries, or whatever. I think the most important thing is to work from the, the, the end product, what you want to achieve. And so, if your end product is supposed to be a 4K video um, of a certain uh, look, you create that image and you find the equipment that best gets it. So, you get a 4K camera, you get a camera that produces decent imagery, right? good sharp images, and then you get a sound kit, a sound recorder, microphones, lapel microphones if you need them. Um, and then you build your kit from there by enhancing the image, maybe you go with better lenses, you go with lighting to improve the scenery, um, you go with um, camera support systems, better tripods, gimbals, drones, cranes, and you build it out that way, but you always start with getting a clean, professional image uh, with a good camera and professional sound. Hi right, guys, so we we'll to the end of our episode today. If you have any suggestions, kindly drop in the comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.